What's up guys, welcome to an edition of Market Marauders, being the market, one trade at a time. If you're new to Market Marauders, the investment channel helps you to find the best deals in the market. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, like, comment, and share. Now today's video is going to be based off of the standpoint of Webull and Robinhood, uh, and that is for options trading. Uh, I try to get these videos every week, so if you if there's something you like to... Uh, look at make sure you hit that bell notification icon down below so you can get updates on when I post these videos So with that being said, let's jump into the first one on my watch list for the week. We got to sign AAPL for Apple Moving average 10 is 339.44 Moving average 50 is 338.36 Moving average 100 is 338.18 They ended the week at 338.80 So Going into the chart, uh, we can see they had a little bit of a breakout uh, towards the end of the day, came up, and then kind of hit of a bullish pattern uh, towards the end of the day. Uh, and they ended the day on um, yesterday, which is Friday, at 338.80. So, you know, I like to give some more information on stock, not just read the stock uh, chart and try to track patterns. Um, so with that being said, let's jump to some background information on Apple to see what is causing all this price movement. So Apple has an upcoming event uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, it's called WWDC 20, uh, where they're basically going to be announcing, uh, you know, some new products and things going on uh, with the company. So it's a pretty big deal for Apple, uh, especially you know with whole pandemic and stuff going on. Uh, you know, them giving updates, uh, being such a large company, uh, will definitely you know help to move and push this. Uh, stock to uh, higher levels in my opinion uh, so special event uh, keynote and platform state of the union uh, apple worldwide developer conference uh, kicks off with exciting reveals inspiration and new opportunities to continue creating the most innovative apps in the world join the worldwide developer community and for an in-depth look at the future of apple platforms directly from apple park so that's going to be the 22nd of june at 10 a.m then they're going to say platforms state of the union uh that's going to be on june 22nd so then also uh during that week they got uh engineering sessions um they also have uh new developer forums and one-on-one -on -one developer labs so uh you know fun packed week of a lot of things going on with the company um and a lot of positive news in my opinion uh for the company so with that being said, I think an option uh, at the 400 to 420 uh, strike price is going to be the best option. Now, for you to options, um, personally, me, I only buy uh, calls or buy puts, uh, but you can sell calls or sell puts. Uh, I just personally do not. And this is going to be on the Robinhood platform. So um, on options, uh, the left-hand side is the strike price. So that's the price you believe that the stock's going to get to, whether you believe it's bullish or bearish, meaning you want to do a call or a put. Um, so I believe that it's bullish. I believe that this news is going to fuel um, the stock to go higher and higher. So I have a call. Um, and then uh, the left-hand side is the strike price. So I think Apple has the potential to get between 400 and 420 dollars um by october 16th so october 16th is the expiration date it's basically the day your contract expires now you may be saying what is a contract a contract is an agreement to buy 100 shares at a specific price uh so if you buy this contract right here you're agreeing essentially to buy 100 shares of apple at three three dollars and one cents per share so you know that's just basically the way it works um so what you'll pay um, is three hundred and one dollars um, for this contract, or five hundred and fifty-five dollars for that specific contract. So you know, just bear that in mind uh, that these prices are based off the share price. Share price is stagnant because the market is closed, so these prices are stagnant. Uh, but also, it's just something you know to consider. So you know, if you were to jump into a four hundred dollar call, uh, just bear in mind this is the place where it ended on Friday. It may go up, it may go down, but you know relative guesstimation on how much money you would need uh, to actually execute that call. Now let's go into uh, Webull and do a comparison of it. Uh, we're going to type in to assign AAPL uh, for Apple and we have a date of October. So we have October 16th as the date. 
and we're going to say that it was 400 to 420. Now, on the Weeble platform, if you've never used it before, if you're new to using it, um, they actually have all the information there right in front of you. So, uh, in comparison, this section is going to be to buy a call, this section is to buy a put, this section is to sell a call, this section is to sell a put. So, instead of going uh, like on Rubberhood and clicking the wholesale side, um, and then clicking a the tab for the put side, uh, all the information is given to you uh, up front. So, there's no real guessing in what you're looking for. So just bear that in mind. Also on here, they go from uh, lowest up top down to the highest. So, you know, just bear that in mind. It's a little little different uh, when going back and forth between the two, um, but it's manageable. Uh, so we said 400. So at 400, you're gonna pay $500 um, to buy a call. And at 420, you're going to be paying $266 per call. So bear in mind that these uh, are two different platforms, so the prices may be different. Uh, one price may be more, one price may be less, but also bear in mind that this is based off of stagnant prices. So the prices uh, are different, um, not only because the platforms are different, but the prices are also different because um, the market is closed. So just bear that in mind, uh, when the market opens, all these prices are going to be different. This is just a range of option on prices. Uh, so jumping into my next one on my watch list, I have ticker sign S&E, uh, and that is for Sony. Moving average 10 is 6825, moving average 50 is 6794. And the moving average 100 is 67.74. So they ended the week at 68.29. So they're above their moving average 50 and their moving average 100. Uh, we can see they've been on a little bit of a breakout run. Um, you know, uh, basically this whole whole week or kind of close to this week. Nope, kind of close to the end of this week. Um, but uh, they kind of had like, you know, a large sell off uh, based on this volume right here. But this is also the one minute chart. So just bear in mind this large section right here is based off the one minute chart. So it may not be, you know, if you look at the 10 minute chart or the, or I mean the 15 minute chart or the 30 minute chart or the one hour chart, it may be not as dramatic as it is right here. Um, so with that being said, going to some background information. So this week, Sony actually released the specs for its PS5. Uh, so let's compare them side by side to the Xbox Series X since that spec was already released. The main difference between the two is the GPU and the storage. Uh, for Sony, the GPU uh, has 10.3 teraflops AMD RDNA 2 uh, compared to the Xbox Series X, uh, which has 12.0 teraflops AMD RDNA 2. Um, and a GPU, I mean the storage for um, the PlayStation 5 is 825 gigabytes custom SSD compared to the one terabyte uh, custom NVMe SSD. So you know, that uh, just side-by-side -side comparison uh, lets you know that, you know, the specs on the um, Xbox are just a little bit better than the specs on um, the PlayStation 5. Uh, the middle ground to me uh, that's going to make the most difference is going to be the price. So the price is TBD, but I think once those prices come out, if, you know, Xbox is more expensive than PlayStation 5, then, you know, I think it'll level itself out. But if PlayStation 5 comes out uh, way more expensive or more expensive at all than Xbox, then I think Xbox is going to take the, the win on this one. So just bear that in mind, upcoming information on that, um, and, you know, look for a sale price. So the specs are given out. Uh, and, you know, it may not matter to, you know, most people, some people who are just PlayStation people don't care. They're just going to get the PlayStation. Some Xbox people are just going to get Xbox. But what's going to matter is the people who are in between, who are on the fence. Uh, you know, so, you know, that's really the core uh, target market for these whole different specs. So, you know, some people may be saying, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of money, but also get good graphics. So that may be a win. Some people, you know, might be saying, I don't care. I just need a new PlayStation because I have an old PlayStation. Uh, so, you know, a lot of interesting things going on with the company. But in my opinion, I think that a put would be the best option just for the fact that their specs did not, uh, 
meet up with the specs of the Xbox. So I think, you know, ultimately that's going to make the company go down. I think a put between $66 and $64 uh, is a good option with the expiration of July 31st. Now, some people may be saying, how do you find your expiration date? Um, you know, I try to go at least a month out, um, especially, you know, if it's around news or something like that, I try to go at least a month out. Or if I know something that's upcoming, I try to go around that date um, just so that, you know, momentum is being uh, shifted uh, in the direction for that actual stock. So between 66 and 64 dollars on the Robinhood platform, you're looking to pay between uh, 220 dollars and 163 dollars. Uh, so let's go into the Weeble platform and let's go into the options side of that and check out Sony. And we have July 31st is the date. And then we set a strike price of 66 to 64. So... So bear in mind, we're talking about a put at this point. So buying puts is this bid section right here. We were on this side last time, but now we're talking about buying puts. So it's right here on this side on the Weeble app. So 66, uh, you're looking at 195, $195. Um, and then for 64, you're looking at... Uh, hundred and forty dollars so that's just a side-by-side -side comparison of the two um, you know just bear that in mind prices may be different because they're two different platforms uh, you know either one is you know good for anybody who wants to use it uh, I'm not for or against either one you know I just use both of them personal preference uh, you all can use whichever one you choose it's just for information only so jumping into my next one uh, we got tickets on SBUX, and that is for Starbucks. Moving average fifty, is, I mean moving average ten is seventy six fifty four. Moving average fifty is seventy five eighty eight. Moving average one hundred is seventy five sixty five, and they ended the week at seventy six thirty eight. So they've kind of been on you know an uptrend, uh, you know towards the end of the day on Friday, and then they kind of had you know a little bit of a sell off uh, towards the end of the day. Uh, some after hours action so uh, jumping into uh, some background information on them um, this is the quarter two fiscal 2020 results uh, just going to go over the highlight of some information uh, you know there are newer articles on this actual company uh, you know things they have going on uh, but I think this is the most important one so far that they've released because earnings definitely tells you uh, how the company is going to perform, uh, how management's going to perform, and strategic goals moving forward uh, for the whole company. Uh, so it says quarter two consolidated net revenue of 6.0 billion, down 5% prior year over year, uh, due to adverse impact of COVID-19 uh, or the whole roadie situation. Uh, so going down, the parts that I want to highlight are. Uh, global comparable store sales declined 10%, uh, driven by 13% decrease in comparable transactions, uh, partially offset uh, by 4% increase in average ticket. Uh, Americas and U.S. comparable store sales declined 3%, driven by 7% decrease uh, comparable transaction, partially offset by 5% increase in average ticket. Uh, international comparable store sales were down 31% driven by 32, a 32% decline in comparable transactions, slightly offset sales, uh, slightly offset by 1% increase in average ticket. China comparable store sales were down 50% uh, with comparable transactions down 53%. Company opened 255 net new stores in quarter two, yielding 6% year over year unit growth, uh, ending the period with 32,050 stores globally, which is 51% and 49% where uh, company operated licensed and respective, uh, licensed respectively. Stores in the U.S. and China compro comprise 61% of the company's global 
portfolio uh, at the end of quarter two with 15,257 and 4,351 uh, stores respectively. So if we look at this metric, we can see U.S. and America is down 3%, um, and then China was down 50%. So I did two numbers together, 53%. So 61% of the company was down 53%. And I think that's a pretty, you know, important metric to consider when uh try to invest in the stock because you know they've been down quite a bit and you know they separated them but you know if you combine them and show that to you you're basically going to take half of this number uh, of stores you know suffered some sort of uh physical uh deficit from you know that quarter and then you know three percent of these stores uh so you know it's still a pretty big metric as far as you know stores is concerned um and something to consider uh when actually investing so with that being said i think a put is the best option between 73 dollars or 75 dollars uh you're gonna be looking on the robin hood platform to pay between 335 dollars uh to 443 dollars uh, at expiration date of July 31st, keeping with the trend of the July 31st expiration date, going into Webull, uh, going into the side for options, uh, we're going to type in SBUX for Starbucks, and we're going to look for January. I mean, July 31st. Oh, no, I said January. And then we're going to be looking at a price of 73 to 75 for a put. So, at $75, you got $230 uh, for a put to buy a put. Um, and then $73, the other one, uh, you'll be looking at $250. So, bear in mind, these are stagnant prices based off the market being closed. But uh, you're looking, you know, around those prices, uh, the 200, uh, the 250 range um, on that one, and then for 75, you're looking at the 335 dollar range. So just bear that in mind. That's just the prices based off of uh, comparison between the two stock, the two uh, platforms. Um, you know, I'm not saying one's better than another, but you know, use it to your discretion. So jumping into my last one, uh, I got ticker sign MSFT. That's for Microsoft. Uh, moving average ten is one eighty eight oh one. Moving average fifty is one eighty seven thirty two. Moving average one hundred is one eighty seven oh seven. They ended the week at one eighty seven seventy four. All right, so they ended at 187.74, which is above the moving average 50 and their moving average 100. Uh, looks like they're on a little downtrend, that there's a massive sell-off uh, towards the end of the day. Um, but we'll see how that performs when the market opens on Monday. Now, bear in mind, you know, the specs for the Xbox Series X and the Xbox and the PS5 are both out. And it looks like the Xbox Series X uh, is going to be, you know, a lot better performing than the uh, PS5. Uh, and I think that will also help, you know, fuel some of the momentum uh, for Microsoft. So just put that into uh, perspective, but I'm going to also read some uh, press releases from their website. Uh, so it says adaptive uh, biotechnologies of Microsoft launched groundbreaking immunocode um, database to share population wide immune response. Um, Microsoft announced the expiration of its exchange offers. Microsoft Workday announced a strategic partnership to accelerate uh, planning for today's world. Uh, Racing Gets Time, medical researchers, uh, life science companies, and running survivors uh, launched a national campaign to drive blood plasma donation. Uh, Sony Semiconductor Solutions and Microsoft Partner uh, to create smart camera solution for enterprise customer. Uh, FedEx, um, and Microsoft joined forces to transform commerce. So they have a lot of things going on uh, with the company. Um, you know, a lot of different, you know, metrics. Their CEO, uh, Bill Gates, is definitely, you know, real passionate about, uh, you know, finding a cure to this whole pandemic situation, um, you know, analyzing the situation so it doesn't happen again. Um, also, they're also doing, you know, the gaming consult. So there's a lot of things going on with the company. Um, and I think it'll make them, you know, be profitable in the future. So, uh, with that being said, I think a call between 190 and 200 is going to be the best option. 
you'll be looking on the Robinhood platform to pay between $940 to $523. Also, bear in mind, these are stagnant prices. Um, these are based off stagnant prices, which is this strike, uh, share price is stagnant. So once the market is actually open on Monday, these prices will fluctuate, either going up or going down. These are just a range of values uh, that you'll be looking to spend uh, on the Robinhood platform for that. Uh, now, jumping into Webull, going into the options side, uh, we have ticker sign MSFT uh, for Microsoft. And then for some reason, I'm having to click off and click back on in order for it to load. Uh, going to July 31st. Um, also, you know, if you're using the Robinhood platform, I mean the Webull platform, uh, make sure that all of your charts are on the same group, uh, because if they're not, if this was on one, this was on two, this was on three, uh, they will all be, you know, showing different charts. So in order to get, you know, a seamless, uh, you know, change. So when this chart changed, this chart changed, they're all on the same ticker. Uh, make sure you're setting your group to the same. They're all on two. Um, so just bear that in mind. You may you know, go on here and be on Microsoft, but then, you know, be chart wise on Apple and, you know, some other stuff going on, uh, and news feed be on something else. Uh, so just bear in mind, you set all the groups the same and it'll change all seamlessly. So that's just, you know, a tip, uh, for using, uh, Webull. So we're looking between 190 to 200. Uh, we're going to scroll down here. So if you're going to 190, uh, buying a call, you're looking at uh, $1,060. No, that's the put. Uh, you're looking at $895 uh, to buy a call. Um, and then to buy um, at $200, uh, you're looking at $475. So, you know, that's just a synopsis of the two. I uh, hope you all have a good week trading out there. Um, Drop a comment down below. Tell me what you guys are looking at this week as far as options are concerned. Make sure you smash the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up uh, icon down below. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.